very much for that introduction, Hudson. Uh, and thank you for your invitation to speak to you this morning. Um, as uh, Hudson introduced, I'm the chair of the Southeastern Sydney Local Health District, or CESLED HREC, and um, the CESLED provides health care in the lands of the Darawal, Gadigal, Wangal, Griagal, and Bijigal peoples, and I, I'm calling you from Bijigal land, and I pay my respects to elders past and present. Um, I recently had the good fortune to visit Brisbane, the land of the Yagara and Durbal people, and the Gold Coast, uh, the lands of the Yag Yagamba people, and I was welcomed to country in both, and my fondness for Queensland has grown tremendously. Um, so this talk um, is made on behalf of my colleagues, Monique Makara, Tegina Hold, and uh, Chris White, and most of all, Kevin Nee, who inspired this talk. Uh, in the spirit of disclosure, I must confess the following. I've only attended some of the sessions of this conference, um, and I'm in the middle of my clinic, um, forgetting the time zone differences between Australian Eastern Daylight Time and Standard Times, uh, when I heartily said yes uh, to this eight o'clock start. Uh, one of the points raised in the um, HREC problem solving session chaired by Gordon yesterday was how HRECs, um, what the role of HRECs were in adjudicating um, the uh, quality of research. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the national statement starts with research and merit and integrity at section 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, and I remember a maxim coined by one of our members, researchers can waste their own time, but not the participants time. And for a health service HREC, particularly when patients are participants, the benefit of the research um, needs to be measured by how it adds to accessible knowledge. So for our HREC at least, the clarity of the aims, methods and analysis plan are considered first. And we also consider the intended output of the research and ask whether it will get there. But the HREC is constituted of members who, as much as they become increasingly familiar, may not feel authoritative with scientific and research methods. As much and as heartening as it, when the chaplain in the committee starts talking about sample size, it is another level for it to be expected for them to talk about non-inferiority power calculation. So the scientific review committee to assess um, scientific merit removes applications that are underprepared or infeasible and reduces the administrative load of um, presentations to the HREC. So over the 14 years I've been involved in the HREC, I've seen four models of scientific reviews. And in this slide, I have denoted my estimate of the depth and speed of review conveniently for each of these. Um, I had to put them into the four blocks. So uh, they, the, the position of the text is probably my estimate more than anything else. Uh, so firstly, this committee decided um, how uh, the scientific merit um, using a scientific review committee, first of all. Um, and um, we, we did this um, uh, at the start of my involvement. That's when I started. We had a completely separate scientific review committee functioning as a subcommittee of the HREC. Uh, this committee met monthly and reviewed all applications first. This committee decided whether an application had enough merit to proceed to the HREC review. Applications could be held back or rejected by the scientific review committee and never discussed at the HREC. Now, the chair of the scientific committee was the deputy chair of the HREC and gave a summary of each application for discussion by the, to the HREC. This um, committee allowed in-depth scientific review and added gravitas to any recommendations made, but was very resource intensive as the research support office was, eventually, was essentially managing two uh, committees at the same time. So it was high on depth, but low on speed. I cannot remember when, but this committee dissolved with some of the members joining the HREC some, somewhere um, along the line. So with that, the absence of the scientific review committee, the next thing we tried was um, a HREC review where the scientific um, member or clinician member in the committee would review the application from a scientific perspective and then one to two members, other members would focus on the ethical review. This was essentially reviewing unvetted applications at the HREC meetings. 
Um, this worked well for well-prepared items, but was particularly problematic if the scientific merit was lacking, because at the HREC meetings, the scientific aspects would then dominate over the ethical aspects in discussions. After all, if there were major changes that needed to be made, then the ethical concerns would uh, be significantly changed as well. So in a very busy meeting, there was an over-reliance on that one med member to adjudicate the scientific merit. On my chart, I listed it high on speed, although you could argue that if um, you know there, there was a limit to how much review can be given, so it just kept churning round and round. But on the time clock, um, it certainly was um, a, a advantageous uh, way to do it this way, all within the, um, the uh, workflow uh, of the um, research support office. Then we had a change in the chair and we tried a third model, um, which is the executive committee review. So an executive committee of the HREC comprising of the chair and a scientific member of the committee vetted all applications prior to them coming to the HREC. Um, the scientific member was a clinical academic who most likely did most of the reviews out of hours with the obvious problem of unsustainability uh, and burnout. When it worked, it provided a good depth of review, uh, better than, I think, the member reviewer uh, system, but allowance were made uh, when the individuals could not do this. So it affected the consistency and the speed of the reviews. In 2021, upon a restructure of the Research Support and Governance Office, a 0 0.4 FTE position was created contracting a scientific reviewer to do the pre-review of all submissions alongside the pre-review administrative review. So investigators are provided with a minimum one week to address preliminary feedback before their applications are listed for discussion at the HREC meeting. Over a 32 month period from December uh, 21 to August 23, sorry, 22 month period, um, 255 applications were pre-reviewed uh, with second pre-reviews required for some. Significant feedback involving recommendations for major revisions were provided to 80 applications of which 50 were rejections. So that's 12 applications a month uh, and which of which two needed significant work, with some of them being rejected. Now, this measure it improved the preparation and quality of the stuff that was coming to the HREC to review, and the pre-review pre also provided um, some You know, it was provided alongside the application documents and the admin um, review as well uh, for the members to look at them before the meeting. The pre-review facilitated, I think, more um, productive discussions during the HREC meetings. And most importantly, it was liked by both the members and the research support officers. So um, I think that the combination of the pre-review with the additional um, review within, within the meeting, including by the scientific members of the committee, I think increased the depth and the time sites alongside the administrative review meant a higher speed as well. So um, in conclusion, um, there were other dimensions to consider as well. So the CES led allocated the 0.4 FT funding for this position equivalent to two working days a week, acknowledging the amount of work that this type of um, uh, uh, role requires. And the professionalization of the research review means it gets done in the time allocated. As chair, I think this is money well spent um, for two reasons. It's kept the HREC members happy um, and continually engaged. And the research offices like it too, because it does not affect their timelines. And in fact, I think suspect it aids their timelines as well. The, we are very fortunate to have a highly capable, committed and empathic team player uh, in this role. But I also recognize it may be difficult to find a particular individual to fulfill the requirements of the role within a different HRECs. Lastly, I'd like to, to talk about the level of visibility. So for this person in our district, it is low. The researchers at our health district have a long tradition of answering preliminary administrative and scientific review questions as part of the ethics application process. So as to reduce friction, uh, we have done this review in the name of the research support office and the HREC rather than in the name of a specific scientific review officer. 
So it's, today was just an opportunity for me to share um, four models of scientific reviews that I have observed over the years. I've been um, both a member and chair of the committee and to uh, just uh, ex sort of like explain the one that I think has worked the best so far. So thank you very much. Thank you, Melvin. Um, you haven't gotten any questions yet. I'll leave one minute for anybody who would like to ask a question. Hi, hi, Hudson. Um, I, I will, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Um, hi, Melvin. That was that was really wonderful, actually. And um, you know, have you found that this change has um, you know, in, increased your the the quality of the interaction with researchers? The quality of the outcomes and uh, and overall the, uh, uh, the you know the the committee. Uh, yeah, so I think um, a stretch purpose for somebody in this role would be to uh, have a reach out type of um, role uh, where uh, you know we might have um, somebody who would go back to discussing. Um, aspects of research to people who are new at it or who have um, made mistakes, etc. Um, in this particular case, we um, have only reserved the patient, uh, this person, for the role of the scientific pre-review. Um, we have other people who are doing the reach out to the researchers um, in as far as the sort of like level of improving or increasing the the, the quality of research within the health district. Um, but I think the I think uh, as a chair, I feel that um, it's just quick and efficient. I think that's the main thing in the process point of view that we've got somebody who's tasked with this um, and it's not relying on volunteers um, to this, do this really important role of scientific review. <laughs>